Welcome, Wine Yaks and Wisdom Wanderers. I am your host, Matt Cain, host of Wine and Wisdom Podcast. And this is our very, very first episode. Thank you for joining us. And before we get into the episode, I want to talk about what this episode, this show in general, is all about. You see, Cain Action Team, we're really known more for creating martial arts tutorials, fight scenes, short films stunts and action design and all that so you may be wondering huh why are they doing a podcast about wine and wisdom <laughs> well i'm gonna tell you why you see i have interests that are outside believe it or not outside of just martial arts and movies and all that fun stuff one thing i'm very passionate about is wisdom and it comes in many forms we're going to be talking about philosophy psychology, spirituality, religion, life, death, the eternal truths of life, what it means to be a human, right? That's what we're going to be talking about in this show. And uh, yeah, we're going to be diving deep. We're going to be meeting behind the veil uh, with another human being and what it means to be a human being. So for this very first episode, I couldn't think of anybody else better <laughs> than to have my homie, one of my OGs, Darth Jim. Darth, how you doing, brother? Hey, you know, in this time of uh, COVID, right, and everything yeah. going on, um, doing doing good. You know, dodged a bullet uh, so far. Um, family's good. You know, uh, we're just hanging right in and, and doing what we love to do. Right on. Darth's been a, a great friend of mine for quite a few years. We even did a podcast together. You can check it out. It's still up, uh, I believe, Yeah. called Flicks That Kick, where we reviewed uh, action movies. Yep. But this is completely different. This is way different than anything we've done before it is <laughs> and i uh, i guess my i'm trying to install updates on my phone we're going to remind us later on that <laughs> anyways uh, and we're, and we're, we're like uh <laughs> this is a video podcast it's different than than having a audio, the audio podcast pod, yeah so when things like that happen you roll with it you roll with yeah so yeah. anyways um and it won't be the last. It probably won't be. <laughs> but that's life, right? Just yeah. to bring it back full circle. So yeah, in that's this in this show, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drinking wine, and we're gonna, this is you know it's really the show is basically a reason for me to just drink every week. <laughs> drink wine I, every week. I don't and, have a problem with that. And more importantly, you know, talk about some deep stuff uh, with people that I want to learn from, that I want to get glean wisdom from, um, and just having these great conversations. Mm -hmm. I love talking, and I love. And everybody that knows me, like, yeah, Matt, we know you love talking. To but um, <laughs> I love just talking about life in general. It's my, it's the, to me, the most fascinating subject. You know, yeah. I, I minored in philosophy in college. I just love talking about life, and um, you know, so this show we're gonna dive deep. Um, everything that we talk about, you know, I want to get get to the root of what it means to be a human being. And if there's anything that you know, you or any future guests don't want to talk about, something that's off limits, hey, so be it. Just say I respect so. that. I understand yeah. that. But I, we're here. I want to have fun talk uh, but also you know i'm not the kind of person just likes to be on the surface and talk about hey what you know how are the browns what's the weather like that stuff's fine and dandy but i i want to get to know a being at its core at yeah the root. yeah yeah i hate that that you know very surface level talk yeah. to me that's that's for the birds man i want to know who you are deep inside i want to know what makes you tick what you love what you hate what you fear that's right you know um, how, how are the browns doing actually doing really well oh, okay good. but we're not here to talk about that oh okay, okay good i'm sorry so with that being said um, as you can see with our wine glass behind us, very first thing we're going to do is we need to get our wine ready, baby. We got to get them bottles popping. So let's do that. All right. <laughs> Grab your bottle. So we got, here's what we got here, guys. All right. So I have, uh, and you know, remember we're in the middle of a, a great recession here, a COVID yes, recession. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's... So money is not flowing in bountiful right, right, right. Uh, quantities. Therefore, um, I have... Crane Lake, uh, and if we can get it in focus there, right? Crane Lake, all that fun stuff. I'm not going to show the tag there, but you can see it's not an expensive bottle of wine. <laughs> we're not popping a $200 bottle of wine here. Um, we're going with Crane Lake, and it's a Merlot, and I'm a fan of, of you know, dry reds, Cabernets, Merlot. I, I, I really like the drier, the better. Yeah. A little bit of sweet's okay, yeah. but uh, that's kind of my jam here. What do you got going on, Jim? Well, I got the uh, the... Uber expensive, right? Bare, barefoot, barefoot all right. pink Moscato. And I just enjoy any of the pink Moscatos. You know, and there's another one I can't remember. It's real close to a pink Moscato, and, and I'll, uh, I'll buy that as well, you know. Um, 
but I'm kind of, you know, red wines and me don't get along. Um, probably because they're too sweet, I'm guessing, but these are just fine. The taste is fantastic. So that that's that's my beverage of choice. So, you know, now my guests, they don't have to drink wine, you know. They right. don't have to drink anything at all if they don't want to. I, that, I That's their decision, and I respect that. But your boy, I'm going to be drinking uh, some <laughs> wine every weekend, a glass or two, um, for every episode. So without further ado, let's pop them, huh? Let's, let's get do it going. Yeah, let's yeah. get the pour going. All right. Here, screw, screw lid, right? That's how, <laughs> that's how expensive that is. All right. It's easy to open now. Go ahead and give it a pour there, Jim. Yep. I'm going to do mine. Go. And we're going to uh, see. If we're gonna you want me to go first? You want me to go no, first? No, I'll go. Yeah, you and, go. And hopefully it doesn't become a little like ASMR. I'll tell you what that is later. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I don't Let's know what see. that Here is. Here Get the glugs going. Nice. Is there a better sound in the world than that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a great sound. Uh, I don't know well, if this I'm is going to do it or not. Let's see. Not the same. A little bit. All right. There we go. We just have to imitate, right? Okay, well, I just need a different shaped bottle, but uh, you know what? My cup holds it all just the same. So. There you go. And that. I think, yes, there's the in action team mug. You got to sport that. So cheers, yeah. Jim. And uh, as you can see, I'm drinking out of a. Rather unique uh, vessel here. So this is a, a monkey at night. And I, true story here, I got this uh, from the jungles of Cameroon. I was backpacking um, deep into the, into the jungles, and I came across a pygmy village. And upon entering the pygmy village, I was stopped by a couple of the elders of the village. And they informed me that to, um, in order to accept a, a white westerner into their village, I needed to appease... The jungle god. Okay. In order to, to appease the jungle god, I had to go deep <clears throat> into the jungle, and I had to consult with one of the uh, fairies of the jungle, <laughs> and uh, the fairy would then give me an herb, and this herb I was to take back to the elders into the village, and then they would give bestow upon me a gift. So I was able to get the herb from the fairy. Great. And they uh, bestowed upon me this wonderful... Uh, monkey cup and I've been carrying it ever since just don't look on the bottom um, but anyways <laughs> yeah, there it is from the, the pygmy jungles of Cameroon so cheers mm. not a bad nose I'm, I'm completely bullshitting this I don't know I'm not a, a wine connoisseur <laughs> so I don't know about the legs and the nose and all that and the slurp and all that but I know for that price of that bottle of wine that it's good it's gonna work for me it, it so, works for us that's um <laughs> so that's good that's that's nice 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 good merlot from crane lake from california i give it like three glugs i don't know we'll come up yeah, with some sort yeah, of rating, yeah, rating yeah. system as we progress here on on wine and wisdom all right let's get into it shall we um and, and i sure. can't think of a better way for the first question of the first episode a better topic to talk about than this um and obviously jim you know, your name is Darth Jim, so we know you're a Star Wars fan. Yes. Star Wars aficionado. Yep, yep, yep. You can just look at the back of your car and see those bumper stickers, and you know you're a fan of the most prominent character. If everybody thinks of Star Wars, they think, you know, Luke Skywalker or Darth mm. Vader. Yeah, maybe right. Later, yeah, right, right, right. But, uh, or Han, but primarily Vader. And just recently, um, the actor that played Darth Vader, David Prowse, passed David away. David Prowse, yeah. So with that being said, <clears> let's <throat> talk about death. <laughs> The very first question of the first episode, we're going deep. We're going. We're going to talk about death. I know that's a topic that you know some people don't like to broach, but um, you know, newsflash for newsflash for you guys, um, every single one of us, me, you, him, we're all going to die. Just like they say, death and taxes, right? That's right. Coming every, for you. It does it like whatever experiences happen in your life that that can be unique. We're all going to die. Yes. You know. Absolutely. And. and that's something that's in common with every human being. And that's what I love. That's what I want to get to the core with, of this show is, you know, I want to talk about what it's like to be human, mm -hmm. our humanity, to meet behind that veil. When we are so, you know, regardless of our differences, how, how we look, you know, the color of our skin, who we worship, whatever, you know, we have so much more in common than we do different. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about, you know, what it's like to be a human. And at the end, ultimately, we die. As human beings. Yep. It's one so, thing we all have in common. Yes. 
So, Jim, you know, what, you, what are kind of your thoughts on death? Are you afraid of it? Um, what does it mean to you? What do you think it's like on the other side? All that. So, um, I, I guess my perspective has probably changed over the years. Um, at, at this point in my life, I guess I, I, I accept it. I'm not afraid of it. Now, you know, and I say that now, but if I, you know, got COVID and was on my deathbed or whatever, I might think a little differently. But just sitting here, um, you know, I, I know it's coming. I've had time to prepare for it. Um, you know, I know it's part of part of life, you know. Uh, so to me, it's it's it. I, I guess it's what I would leave behind unfinished. It would bother me the most. OK, uh, my daughter, my wife, whatever. Um, but as far as me personally, uh, no, I, I don't fear it hardly at all. Um, I'm confident in what I believe as uh, the hereafter. OK, um, so that doesn't bother me. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know, 30 years ago, I, I probably thought about it different, you know, uh, a little more sensitive or or afraid you know um when it came down to it i know we all think we're you know invincible you know at some point in our lives but um so from my point of view for me that's 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 how i feel about now you know um now on the other side excuse me i uh actually got to witness a my, my father okay um, pass away. We were, we were this far apart when he, when he left and, and people were like, what are you talking about? But it, 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 it was really to me, awesome. If you got to go, you know, I was there. He, he just never woke up. He was sleeping at the time and his heart just stopped. I could, we were watching him and I, I had a brother-in-law with me and, uh, he just stopped breathing, you know? And it was just, you know, so, so wonderful to be there with him when that happened, you know, and, and I, I, you know, who knows? I'd like to believe he knew I was there. Well, he knew he was there. I was there before he went to sleep, you know, but, um, so, you know, some people hear me say that and they, they don't understand, I guess. I've got a buddy who's facing, uh, maybe the same thing. And I, I, I told him, I says, uh, you know, if you can be with him, that is something you will never forget. Uh, my mom died 20 years ago, 21, and uh, she just had some heart issues and she was in the hospital. I never got to, to see her, you know, and that probably, I don't know, it kind of made me, it probably hurt me more when she passed away because I didn't get the be there with her and I was younger you know 40s in my early 40s um but being with my dad I, I have no issues with that at all it was it was it was a great experience and if you can do it you know I, I say go for it you know because a lot of people are afraid of it you know but mm-hmm. it, it, it was wonderful in my in my opinion so yeah I mean you so you bring up a, a, a <clears throat> few interesting points you know number one um, it is, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's a topic a lot of people don't, they're not like right off the gate want to talk about. No. Death. Um, and because of that, because of how much they push it aside, you know, the more anxiety they're going to have. Oh, absolutely. In life with it. You know, the way I look at it is it's like, um, it's like a giant bar of something you got to chew. And the earlier you start chewing. Yep. The earlier you can digest it. That's right. And then. You can take that energy that you've used to push it away and use it to enhance your life now. That yes. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, personally, I've been in the presence of death many times. Um, a lot of family members and friends that I've actually you know, seen literally die. Okay. So, um, so to me, it, when you're in the presence of death, you're in the presence of truth, like absolute truth. Um, doesn't get much plainer. It doesn't. And you really, you know, you really are alive in that moment. And I, I, and that's, you know, some of the things I I love to be around. I know it's weird. 
I'm not saying I love to be around death, but I like being in the presence of truth. And you're yeah. when you're talking to somebody who's on their deathbed, you know, like there's no such thing as bullshit. Right. You can't bullshit somebody that's on their deathbed. Right. Every conversation you have with them is completely um, inundated with truth. And, you know, in our culture specifically, you know, we we don't like, you know, we kind of put death aside. We push aside. You know, that's why we put the elderly yeah. in nursing homes. That's, you know, yep. that's why we, it's something we don't talk about. But the problem is because of that, in other cultures, it's out in the open. It's out in the forefront. You talk oh, yeah. about death, it's there. You know, I know in certain, you know, rivers, maybe in the Ganges and in India, like they, they put their dead bodies floating down the river and, you know, it's out in the open. So that's, I think, has caused a lot of anxiety in our culture is the fact that we just, we don't talk about it, you know. And, yeah. And because of that, you know, there, there's that tenseness that surrounds it. Um and again, I've always been fascinated with with uh, death and, and philosophy. And I think it, I mentioned this, I minored in philosophy in college. I just love, you know, talking about the big questions in life. And mm -hmm. a book that I read when I was in college, a really famous book by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross called On Death and Dying. And Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was a uh, um, kind of an end-of-life doctor. Okay. She would be with these individuals who are getting ready to transition on in their last months and she i think she estimated in her book she was with ten thousand people that oh wow <laughs> that's, yeah that's a lot that's a lot right so she dedicated her life to death and dying you know and basically what she said in her book is that you know when somebody is passing on it's almost like a a caterpillar that's shedding its cocoon and the butterfly is coming mm -hmm, into the spirit. Mm -hmm. You're coming into the spirit, right? And it's actually, I think they've done studies when you pass on that you weigh less immediately. There's something that leaves your body. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've heard that, right. So what she said is that, you know, that's what it is. Is like your basically your true self is ascending, going into heaven, What, whatever. We don't have to talk about heaven right now, but sure. that's what she talked mm -hmm. about. Is It's so important to me in the presence of, of death. And I don't think... To me, death is mysterious and it's, and it's interesting. And I'm really like, I'm really like, wow, what's it going to be like? I'm not saying I want to die right now for you know, right, right, sure. But sure. it's to me, it's not like it's it's not the Grim Reaper of oh my god, don't ever like I got so much life to live. Like I love life and I love yeah yeah being here yeah. But I'm not so attached and in, in clinging to this model of Matt that I'm afraid of what it's like of moving the. The mystery. I think you got to be open to the mystery. So the mystery yeah. of what it's like on the other side to me yeah. is fascinating. Yeah. You know, what is it going to be like? And um, Ram Das, uh, he's a, a spiritual teacher I've you know studied a lot of. He said death is like taking off a tight shoe. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to say, um, yeah, well, you you know this whole listening to you. You've been talking about moving on to to wherever. Okay, um, but th the simple fact that you're moving on. And I've got, you know, a friend who just doesn't acknowledge that at all, doesn't believe it at all. And I, you know, and I ask myself, I, I asked my friend, then why, you know, what do you live for? Yeah. Okay. Because, it, it, you know, is, is this all for not, you know, um, I don't believe so. You know, I, I truly believe that there is, you know, f from my point of view, it, it's a heaven, you know, um, and, and a hell if that's the case. OK, uh, but for those people that just, you know, it, it just boggles my mind when they say oh, there, there's, there's we're going to die and we're just going to turn to dust. And I'm like, OK, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry for you, you know, but. You know, yeah, I, I, you know, <clears throat> obviously, who knows? We won't know till we get there. Yeah, it's yeah. all conjecture. You can have, and faith is something that, you know, you can't argue. Um, but mm -mm. Um, I tend to believe that there's definitely something, whatever that is, whether it's reincarnation, whether it is heaven, whether it is hell, whether it's I don't know. But I feel like there's definitely more to this than just meets the eye. Do what meets the eye. I, I think, and we could expand that even further to like knowledge in general. Like we know this much that much yeah of what there is to know in the universe there's oh, yeah. so much more we don't know so to just be like dismissive that it's not a thing 
yeah. I think is kind of ignorant. Well, and it also leads back to the old question is, why are we here? Yeah. You know, um, is this purposeless? Yeah. This, this, you know, is what, are you and I purposeless? You know, I, I don't believe so. I think we're all here for something, you know. So for me, it's to drink more wine. All right. Yeah, there um, you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you, yeah. I think. I don't know. But yeah. So yeah, I, I think there's a part of me that is afraid of dying. That's the part that's clinging to this life that wants to, you know, experience, like, you know, I'm 32 years old. Right. <laughs> you know, I feel like I still have a lot of life left. And, and yeah, you, um, you should feel that. So I don't want to die right now. No. So that's the part of me that's kind of afraid that, you know, the, the part of me that's separate, that's clinging, that's, and then there's the part of me that's like, you know, spacious and open and, and, um, non-separate and, and divine and one and all like there's that part of me that's not afraid. Yeah. I, I was just going to say you're, you're not afraid of it. Well, there, there's part of, so to the, the, I guess the best answer is I'm afraid and I'm unafraid. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like that's the balance that every human being needs because if you were not afraid I, I of agree. dying at all, you would just go die and kill yourself. Right. And I think there are people that are like that. The people that commit suicide. Oh, you know, I never, never thought you know, about I, that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. In that moment, at least, they weren't. Right, they were, right. Something was driven. I don't, we don't need to get into the psychology right, right, right. of that, the mental illness of that. But at some, like, I think every human, you know, like I said, at some point, you have to come to terms with your own mortality. And I think the better, the, yeah. the earlier you the do that. The sooner you can do it. Yeah. The better off you're going to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know? it just and makes then, everything after that yeah, even more there's, enjoyable. There's a... I think it's a Zen proverb that goes something like, you know, when you're alive, be dead, be totally dead, then it's all good. <laughs> yeah, something like that, right? All right. Um, next question. Oh, here we go. Who is Jim? Who is Darth? Who is Jim? Who, who am I? Who, who who is Jim? Oh man. Who are you? You know, I have asked myself that so many times. Um, on the surface, or you just mean in general? If I just if I give you the question, who is Jim? Who, who, and remember who the I? remember the uh, there's a hair. Would you quit <laughs> that? Remember the uh, <laughs> the thesis statement of this show is we want to go deep. Okay. So with that in mind, who is Jim? Who 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 is Jim? Um. Well, I, someone that's changed over time you know i'm not the same guy i was when i was 18 or 30 you know um i don't even know where to start i guess i guess <laughs> just give me it, and don't and there shouldn't be any pressure to this it's no just I, whatever I don't i don't you're feel feeling, any bro um i am a guy i guess that um struggles with life Especially this year, a lot of difficulty this year. Feel that, yeah. and, and I think we all do. Oh yeah, you know, not not just you and I, but the whole world is feeling this. Um, so I struggle with that more now, and and and, and it and it, and it actually is going to be a part of us going forward. Knowing what we, you know, knowing what this year did to everybody, on. So many levels, different levels. So I've changed there, you know. I, I, um, I, I guess before this year, I would have said that I was, uh, you know, a happy guy. And I am still, you know. Um, you know, willing to take some, some chances, willing to explore new things. As, as you know, you know. Absolutely. Um, started things I've never, never ever thought I could do. So I like to think that I'm, uh, open to most things, ideas. Um, I'll, I'll at least explore them. You know, I mean, I believe in them, but I'll explore and, and listen. I try to listen. Um, I'm, I'm 63 years old. Okay. And, uh, age is but a number. Age is but a number. So I'm 18 here. Okay. Yes, you are. Uh, in yeah, yeah, I was gonna say I think you'd agree with that. Um, maybe younger. <laughs> maybe younger. I think you're just hitting puberty. No. <laughs> um, I enjoy. I, I really enjoy people. Um, you know, I, I try to uh, bond with them. I try to 
you know, as best that they, they will let me figure out who they are, you know, and I, and I try to show myself, you know, um, I, I, I trust before I distrust, you know, I, I love before I hate. Okay. Um, sometimes I don't look before I leap, but that's a different story. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, I recently just, you know, started taking better care of, of this thing, okay? Because without this, we get back into our other discussion, right? Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, you know. Um, I enjoy the other martial arts that I just recently, what am I, four years old in that or something like that? I can't remember. Um, you know, I, I the people that, I, I guess the biggest thing is who am I? I I'm, I'm, I love people if people will let me in a little bit um I'm, I'm that's all i need that's all i need yeah you know i would agree with uh, everything you said um one of the first things i'd if, if you were to ask me who is jim i'd say somebody that's very e very easy to get along with yeah and, too easy probably <laughs> and, well and he's very uh like very helpful you're very helpful and caring um, and I think those are, and I think that's why we get along so well is because I'm, I'm, you know, I really, I dig your energy and I, I don't, as, as far out as that is to say, like, that's the kind of people I hang with are people that I dig their vibes and their energy Yeah, mm -hmm. and I dig yours. And I would say, you know, if people ask who the hell is Jim, I'd say he's a very caring, friendly, um, compassionate, um, maybe sometimes a, a perfectionist with certain things. Just certain things. You know, <laughs> good with his hands. You know, but but you know, like um, the number one quality I would say is you're definitely there when you know if somebody needs you, you're there. Like you're not. Mm, you know, I could be better, I'm sure. I'm, we all can. Okay. We all right. can. We're not. None of you know. None of us. Our, our seeds aren't mm -hmm. fully cooked yet. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, and the, and I think that's a testament to you who you are as as a being is like your you know you would help someone out with the drop of a hat no problem mm -hmm. you know like, and that's rare to find somebody that doesn't matter what's going on you know you are somebody that cares and is if open I can, to if help. i can help, if I, you can help i'll try definitely well mm -hmm. and lord knows you've helped me in, um in, in abundance uh what's your sign scorpio scorpio okay. yeah i don't know what that means i used to yeah. know what it means i'd have to look it up now but yeah so I'm, I'm the interesting. I'm the poison guy, right? The, the stinging tail. The stinging I'm an Aquarius. tail. Aquarius. But I, I think there's something to be said for that. However, I think people put too much stock into it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I don't think it's, <clears throat> you know, obviously there's. I think it's certain. It could play a, a certain, you know, role in our lives. How big that role is, who knows? It's fun, but don't. Well, then you get the Chinese thing going yeah, on. Yeah, you know, Chinese. What am I? I'm a dragon. Uh, I think I'm a cock. Okay. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say the other word. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm a chicken. Is, okay. that, is that what it is? A no, a cock is a male. A rooster. Chicken. You a rooster? No, I think it's just called in in the yeah. Chinese a thing. Cock. It's called, I think it's called cock. Sorry. No, oh, you're good. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'd have to, you know, because we used to get the Chinese mats, you know, when you when you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, we'd the all look at those yeah, yeah the place mats, you know, so rooster. sorry I, I digress. You're, I think it was you. I don't. Know, I think they have rooster. I don't know if they have cocks. I don't, I don't we'll know. look it up. Okay, we'll look it uh, up. Com and, and that brings up a, another point. Uh, put in the comments <laughs> here on YouTube. Yeah, and, fix and me. <laughs> this, make sure you leave a like and you subscribe. I'll probably mention that here when we wrap up the show. <laughs> um, uh, I'm really bad at this, you know. Like you'll, you'll also be able to find this um, on Spotify, hopefully Apple uh, Podcasts, wherever you get your your podcast these days. But here we are, you know, streaming video on YouTube. On that, with that being said, speaking of you, what are you afraid of? Heights. Mm. I, I'm a, uh, lately, and this is just new. I okay. don't know if it's an age thing or uh, uh, um, a security, you know, mental. Excuse yeah. me. Mental, mental thing, but like the land, and I've never been like really comfortable with heights. But I would yeah. go on roller coasters back in the day. You know, and I would, um, I climbed the Statue of Liberty, you know, and you can see clear down through the center of that bad boy. Um, that was back when I was early 20s, I'm going to guess. Um, it wasn't a problem then. 
Uh, and a lot of it's related. Now, I will go up in a, even a small Cessna, like a little 172. I'll go up in there. If there's a box around me, you're good. I'm cool. So you just got to be enclosed. I just got to be okay. Well, not necessarily enclosed. I just uh, have to feel secure. With, and, it, and, you know, being up in a Cessna is probably, you know, more dangerous than me being up some of the places I work. Oh, I, sure. I can see oh, God, clear yeah. through the floor five stories up, you know, and I get a little shaky on those. So, so that's one thing that I'm afraid of. It's just kind of recent or more enhanced now is, is heights. And I'm working with that, you know, yeah. I, uh, as I, it's like, if I have to trust myself, I'm afraid gotcha. if I'm in a box or an airplane or an elevator, it can be a crappy elevator. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I feel fine. You know? Um, so it's really weird. It's really not bothering me, but I'm really aware of it. Um, what else am I afraid of? Um, gosh, I used to ride motorcycles a lot and I wrecked, um, oh God, when was it? Well, like three times total, N never really bad, never really broke it, broke my collarbone once, but whatever, a lot of road rash and stuff. So I don't really ride the bike. I still have them all, but I don't really ride them anymore. I, I probably ride that, the one that's the most dangerous, the most, um, which doesn't make any sense, but that's okay too. So, you know, tearing up my body, I guess. But on the other hand, I can get thrown all over and I don't care about yeah. that, right? Yeah. So it, it, it's like, it, it, and what that kind of tells me now that we're talking about this is a lot of these things are irrational. I should be more afraid of somebody throwing me yeah. and busting a hip or a leg or an sure, arm or something sure. than I am in a motorcycle, you know, because it, it happens more often yeah. than the chances of, you know, falling out of the sky or, or, or falling over a handrail on a job site or something. So, so that's another one I don't know, afraid of. Um, rejection, I guess. If I've got an investment, and it's not a fear, maybe it is. If I've got an investment in a person, an emotional investment, and that gets damaged, destroyed, mm. um, interfered with, I, I fear that a lot. Yeah, I understand that. Sure. Um, oh, and, and all the normal stuff. And, and that, you know, my oh, daughter, my sure. wife, uh, my buddies. You know, I, oh, I, and, I, I'm afraid of losing yeah, those yeah. ties. I and mean, that last one you mentioned about, you know, something when you, <clears> have, you know invested in somebody mm -hmm. emotionally to lose, you know, mm -hmm. the rejection of them to or to lose them. Yeah, well, it, it, it's it, not so much the. the <laughs> Well, if the rejection leads to division, that's one thing. Right. I can take rejection. Yeah. Okay. You know. Well, you mentioned you didn't like rejection, so I just want to clarify that. Okay, good. What did What did you mean by like? You but, said you were afraid of rejection. Can you just clarify to, that. To To the point. Well, I think everybody doesn't fear his rejection. No, I, 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 I. You know. I think we all. We're not fans of it. We don't no. like it. We don't walk around wanting to be rejected. I don't fear it to the point where it, it's, you know, well, I guess it could do permanent damage, but um, ah, it's just hard. I, I got you. Yeah, I don't know how to you're, explain you're it. Wrong. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm searching here. No, you're good. Um, name a profound experience in your life. And by the way, guys. All these questions I've not given to him. No, I, I had no clue when I beforehand. when I walked I want into his this. Pure unadulterated responses in the moment. Okay, so and and, and these questions are kind of just I, I write them out down if I think about them, but a lot of them are just spur of the moment, ebb and flow, the convo. So, a profound any profound experience in your life. As, I know obviously I know what number one is that would be meeting me. We get that, but uh, something outside of that. Um. It, meeting this guy is is really because there's a, it goes way deeper than what oh is is be doxed. <laughs> <laughs> is on the surface here. This 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 guy has changed my life so much that it's just uh, I I don't even know how to explain what he has done. <laughs> His youth compared to me and the acceptance you know, of the age group 
and and not only him, um, the the martial arts world, which I had no idea. I've always loved it. Okay, uh, I'd watch kung fu, you know, and all that stuff back in the day. Um, always wanted to get into it, and never did. What a dummy! If you, if you're thinking about it, do it anyway. Remember, when the student is ready, the teacher the, the master will appear. Will come. Yes, yes. Uh, the the, the 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 people I've come to know, both, I mean I'm talking children, to people older than me, that are in this group, um, is just amazing to me. Yeah. Um, so that's one really, you know, profound I guess thing is is you and your world. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, I. Uh, well, my family, I guess, is, is really yeah, blows sure. me away because, because believe it or not, we all, I got five siblings, okay, and my, my mom and dad are gone, and we all get along. Now, not only that, yeah. okay, you can take it to the next circle out, oh and we all get along. Wow. You can. That's impressive. It, it is. Blows, it blows me away. You can go out another circle, and we all get along. It, it is amazing. Um, now, do we all agree on the same stuff? Do we all? No, no. But I can't think of anybody in my mind that that I say, oh, I don't, I, I hate that cousin. You know, ain't nobody. Yeah, nobody. Yeah. The nephews, the nieces, the the, the you know, all of them. So that's pretty profound, I guess, to me. What do you love? Oh, you. Not who. <laughs> what? what? Oh, oh, oh. Um. Working with my hands, I, I, you know, about 10 years ago, I bought this motorcycle that, you know, was back in the day was a hit, you know, and, um, which is how I got my, you know, Darth and, you know, well, I've had that for 40, since 1979, I guess, but the tag. Um, so I, I love working with my hands and you mentioned earlier that I'm kind of OCD on yeah. perfectionism sometimes. And that's what everybody says. It's like, you know, God, he's going to take four years to do that, you know, and, and they're right. Um, but I like to think that it's done. Um, so I love, so I love working with my hands. I would do that way before I would pick up a pencil and a paper, you know? Um, sure. what do you hate? Hate. Yeah. Just no, I you hate, hate you. Hate, hate. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, sure. to me, you know, it, it is the most and designed to be destructive force. It, it, it can take something that is so good and pure and it doesn't even have to be directed. You know, see, you know, it doesn't have to be directed at you. It can be directed at somebody else, yeah. but it, it ends up in your lap. Okay. Yeah. Or directed at you. And it's not about you at all. Um, so, you know, and, and this has just been going on the last number of years, you know, it's like, God, dude, it was the most destructive thing I can think of is destruction, is, is hate, is ill feelings toward anybody. And do I have them? Yeah, sure. You know, sure. I, I got them too. Um, just try to control them, I guess. But uh, so. Yeah, ha- hatred is definitely a poison. Oh. And, you know, really... I think it's important, like there, it, when people say, you know, you shouldn't have hate, like, oh, you need hatred because, you know, you should hate serial killers or rapists or, you know, child molesters and all that. Like, I get that, but there's yeah, a difference. I, I get it, yeah. Hate, not, hate, yeah. hatred, okay, so let, let me see if I can break this See if down. you can do this. Um, hatred doesn't mean, like, you're apathetic or, or indifferent towards unjust you know unjust things right you should have indignation towards those whatever yes. whatever that is it just means that i think hatred is what you carry inside of you um it means being open like an old saying is you know do what do what you have to do with someone but don't ever close your heart off to them right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so whatever if it's you know somebody that has done you wrong seriously wrong wrong you know and think about it, you know say you, know, you hear about families that, you know, a loved one of theirs was murdered, and they're 
Yeah. You know, the person that is on death row or on trial or whatever, and they say, oh, I forgive them. I used to be like, what are you talking forgive about? Forgive this. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Right, right. But now it's, I get it. The forgiveness isn't for them necessarily. No. It's for them. It's for you. It's for healing. It's for healing and letting go of yeah. of that. Yeah. Which blocks growth because you don't, you know, why would you want to walk around your life and harbor, you know, those. That's those the word feelings. I was just going to yeah. use. Don't yeah. harbor those feelings of hatred because nope. then it taints, it spills over into other aspects oh, of your life. Yeah. Again, we're not. Yeah, you know, poison in your heart. It's going to run con- through your veins. Right. We're not condoning you know? what they did. Right. Right. At all. Right. Let's let that be known. Yep. But it doesn't mean that, you know, it, it, you're not operating from that place in your life, you know, of having a closed heart. That's really what hatred is, is your heart's closed off. Yeah. And, you know, when I say heart, I'm not talking about the physical beating human heart. We're talking about your intuitive, that essence of who you are as a person mm-hmm. that connects us all, that human heart. Right. So when you harbor hatred inside of you, it really kills your heart and... Well, it, if, if, if hate goes in, something's got to leave. Correct. Okay. Well, so, not, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta I keep that in mind too, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is, what is love? I know, like I said, we got some deep, heavy hitters, Jim. You might want to take another sip before. Oh, uh, what, what is, is love? love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> no, mom. Sing it. Love? love. What is love? Love, I guess, is <clears throat> multi, multifaceted. It can be. Can it be defined? It, probably not. I, yeah. I'm, 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 I think there are certain things conceptually <sighs> that us as human beings cannot grasp, but we can do our best. And I think love is one of those things. To me, if you want help, before, like I can, I'll kind of give my what my definition of love is. Yeah, go ahead, sure. If love is like, it's kind of the. Ever experience, ever experienceable vastness of our being, in terms of. It's a good way. It's it's not a, it's not a a thing, it's not a person, a place, a thing. It's not even a feeling. It's, it's all of the above. Of that. Yeah, it's everything. It encompasses everything, and encompasses yeah. nothing. It's God. It's love. It's uh, divinity. It's oneness. It's unity. It's. You know, it's the connection of one being to another. It's the opening of yeah. the heart. It's recognizing the divine in you. I mean, there's there there is so many things, and you could put love into different criteria and categories. You know, there's a quote from a movie that I really like, Interstellar, where they say love, you know, is the one thing that transcends time and space. Mm-hmm. Now think about it. You know, your father, who you mentioned earlier, still loves you, right? I, even, I would even, have even, to say so, sure. Even when he's gone. Even when well, he's gone. The point is you feel his love. If you look, yes. If you look back yes. on yes. your time that you had with him, you feel that love. Yes. That right there is proof that it transcends time space and space. And time, yeah. So that's, to me, you know, love is, and it's some. It's still, like I said earlier, I'm I'm not fully cooked. So I'm, st- I'm still learning. <laughs> You're I'm, fully cooked. I'm still learning what it means to be a human. And, and, and love, I and, and I think love... Is something that we all, our definition of it will change as we as we grow and as we well, and it, it's different asked, for everybody if too. If you would ask me ten years ago what love is, I had a completely different definition. I thought exactly. I, I thought I knew what love is. Right. I had no clue. clue. Yeah. No damn clue yeah. what love yeah. was. Yeah. But couldn't have told me that, you know. Right. And you think you know, but you really don't. No. And yeah i don't know I, I i think love is the most powerful force we have as human beings and i think that's what truly makes us you know here evolutionarily is the fact that we can love i think other maybe other animals can love i don't you to, know to a to but, a degree but, probably but i don't know the thing that you know when you see love fully displayed in humanity there is nothing there is no power in this universe that comes close to that no no you know, no. and it, it never ceases to amaze me. It's remarkable the levels that human beings can go to. The, you know, how the our capabilities on each end of the spectrum. How we talked about hate earlier, the cruelty, and the violence and the destruction that we can do to one another is just, yeah, well, it's you unfathomable. Know. But but on the other end of the spectrum, the healing and the love and the compassion that we can have towards one another is. I'm, I get floored by that more than 
the destruction. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny because you'd mentioned that, you know, destruction and, and, you know, healing and, and love can do that. Love can destroy, yeah. you know, um, love for everybody is slightly different. My, my, what I feel inside is going to be different than probably what you or, or, you know, Fred over there, or, you know, Jane over there, you know, it's going to be different. Um, not in a large degree, but in minute details, just based on where we came from, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a deep subject right there. It is. Um, but a good one. I mean, we can't live without it. No. So it's not only good, it's important. It's, it's a necessity. Where would we be without, without that emotion? And think about, or that attachment and it is part of an emotion i think it's if you say it's an emotion that's just remember emotion is a emotion is something that is like happens for a few seconds I think. right 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 so it is part it's a, Both are, emotion an emotion is part of love yes um but you as you can and see part of it's love such, is emotion it's such a broad term and concept that i don't think we can properly no you can't you it can't. really it, it is you and i aren't going to do it nobody else no, has done it yet so it is ineffable it is ineffable you know um but it's also you like you know it when it's there. You know you know it when you feel it. Yeah, you and know it when it's gone. I'll tell you yes. that. Oh yeah. <laughs> and think about this. Think about the first time you fell in love. What yeah. that felt like. Yeah. Was there? Is there anything more powerful than when when you felt any emotion, anything that you felt in your life? Was it as powerful as that? No, 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 no. Yeah. And the same goes for the for the division too of. You know, severing the or losing love. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and I was thinking about this the other day. Like, that, that's nasty. How how necessary despair is for growth. If you think about, at least in my life, the, all the times where you grow spiritually, where you grow as a person, are usually just before that. Let me do the cameras here. <laughs> just before that time of tremendous growth, you look back and it yeah, was this time, is one. This is two. Yeah, it was a time of tremendous despair. Or a time of, of of tremendous hurt or loss or something that forced you to look inward at yep. yourself and see, wow, yeah, like how, where do we go from here? You know, they call it, I think in the Bible they call it dark night of the soul. You know, there's that time where it's like you have nothing, and right. what do I do? You think your world is over? You think that the, the oh the, yeah the fire has gone out? Yep, nothing worth living for. But, you know, and I wrote a poem uh, a couple of years ago um, a, that had touched on this a little bit. And even if you think the fire goes out, there's still an ember that's in there. There is. That will get, you know, there, yeah. stirred it, up Get again. stoked up again. But, but I guess the point is, it's only in those moments when your heart cracks and breaks that your truths come seeping out. And then when your heart heals up... When your heart heals up, it grows bigger and stronger. Well, it's like working out or something. You know, you get yeah, pain good, for that's gain. That's analogy. You know? Um, but the, yeah. And and you look back and you, it's like, I wouldn't want to go through those moments of heartbreak and loss and despair. Mm-mm. But I know how much they were all perfect for me. Yeah. And how much I needed them to grow. And you probably remember because, every one right, of them. You can't yeah. reach like another level of consciousness until, you know, if you're happy, why would you need to grow? You got nowhere to go. Yeah. But when you're broken and you're empty, yep. Then that is the spark that lights the flame that pushes you to that next level. Yeah. And you got to have that. I mean, yeah. what what would we be if you know, uh back to the workout thing. If you didn't do anything, you're just going to fade away, you know, yeah. and into nothing. Into nothing. I mean, or, and, a, and that, or, that, or a ball of goo. Or a ball of goo, yeah. A hut. <laughs> but, um, Java. Yeah, so as we're rounding through it here, a couple <clears throat> questions to kind of finish out. And this has been fun for me so far. <laughs> if it's been fun for you guys, go ahead, like I said, leave a, leave a like, leave a comment in the, you know, comment section. In the comment section. Um, yeah. And, you know, if there's any other topics that you want us to cover, you know, throw them, throw them down. Oh, uh, you could do that, yeah, sure. Because wisdom... Is so vast, you know. It's such a, you know. There is no lid term. on it. That's there is right. no lid, just like on that bottle of or that glass of wine. That's right. You know that uh, in, there's we could we could until the cows come on we can 
you know, go through. So my aunt West Virginia used to say, yeah, yeah. To the cows come home. So it's funny. There's certain sayings that like you go to different parts of the country. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you? What is that? What is like, that? Cornhole. Mean? What is that? <laughs> I just mentioned that to somebody in a, like Florida, and they're like, "That's not what we, what what corn." We don't call cornhole cornhole down here. <laughs> cornhole means something else. Something else. Anyways, a um, couple things. A couple questions before we jam out. Um, what do you want to be? I don't know why I looked up there. For, what do you What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, or who? Do you, I won't who do you grow want? up. I won't. Oh. Okay. Anyway, um, I can tell you what I always wanted to be. Does, does that does, what, does do that not trans? Do That's, you want to be, or who do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, you know, right now I don't know. I always wanted to be a professional drag racer, or a rock star, a drummer. Um, well, you so, are a rock star to me. So, thank you. <laughs> so that was my my yeah. previous things. So what do I want to be when I grow? You know, I I, I guess if, if I can just be um, who I am, which whatever that means, and if I can be. Um, a little bit better tomorrow than I am today, you know. Mm. Um, uh, I would love to get rid of my fear of heights. I don't know if we can work on that, but what's that exposure therapy where they just? Yeah. Well, that's what I do. That's <laughs> yeah. what I do. I, I yeah. force myself into these. But anyway, that's not the question. What do I want to be when I grow up? I, I, I oh, you know, I, I guess I want to be somebody that my daughter. And my sons can look at and be remembered in the same way that I remember my father. Does mm-hmm. that yeah. the answer the question? I guess I don't know. Yeah. That's no, I, mean, I just want to be a little better your, me. Listen, these all these questions you answer them however you're. Well, I just want to know if I'm making sense. Was, you are making. Uh, you okay. always make sense. Do even I always? Make, even when, you don't even when I sense, don't make sense, sense, I make sense. Okay. These questions, however you answer them, however you are called to answer them, there is. There is no objective truth here. There is no objective reality. It's all whatever you're feeling in that moment. Yeah, I guess I have no no physical aspiration. Is that you know? To, oh, I want to be a truck driver or something. You know, um, you know those those are behind me right now. So I'm just gonna all, all I can do is focus on on this. You know, I want to be a better martial artist. Okay, uh, that's something I would want to be. Um, I don't know. I can't. I can't really. Okay. Think. I guess I don't think way in the future, except for those. You know, my daughter, my yeah, yeah, you know, my mind, my and my, that's listen, my that's, body. You know, it's you're never, you're you're never too old, and it's never too late for anybody and anything in life. Believe me. You know, and you started martial arts when you like fifty nine years old. Fifty nine years old. <laughs> I, I've told you this. You're an inspiration to me because. You know, I started when I was a teenager, yeah. and you were doing this. I don't know if I would have the chutzpah, man. I don't know if I would have the well, the, the cojones to do, to that, do that at that yeah. age. Yeah. Yeah. So kudos to you. Cheers to you. For well, well, you made it fun. Doing that. I'm glad. And you still do. I'm glad. I, I try to. I love it. Man. I know you do. Um, You're a good teacher. And I, more than that, I love You're people. You're a great master. I, I love people. You, you do. Know? I know Even you do. Even when they're dicks and assholes to me, I still love people. Because <laughs> I can, believe it or not, I can find a redeeming quality in anybody. I think... Deep, even in the blackest, darkest heart, there's still a little there, bit in there's there. something in there. Sure, there's something. There's something in there. You know, you might have to dig a little. You bit. might have to dig. But sure, you know, but um, absolutely. You know, I think people people are amazing, and I learned like Abraham Lincoln said. He said he Abraham Lincoln said he never met somebody he didn't learn something from. Yeah. Most of the time, it was what not to do. <laughs> but and Lord true. knows, I've met quite a few, few people that I'm like. Don't do that. You can just see me checking off like the box. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I will not be doing that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I learned, and that's what that's what I wanted, you know, to have this podcast for is I want people on here that I can learn from. And Lord knows, you know, I've learned a hell of a lot from you. And I've well, it goes both learning. ways. Just so you yeah. know, life is a continuous process of making mistakes and learning from those mistakes, picking your stuff and yourself off, picking yourself back up, and moving, moving on forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all you can do. The problem is, and, our, and, it, and it well, well, you can go the other way, but well, it doesn't that, help. Anything. What I was going to say is yeah. the problem is our minds. You know, we have these our 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 brains. We don't understand them fully. Our minds. Oh are, no! You know, when they say you have a mind of its own, your mind has a mind of its own. It does. Because yeah. think about thoughts you have. And you're like, why did I have that thought? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but that's not good. Our, yeah. Don't, don't ask me only, about that. We're okay. only smart enough to know like how stuff works, but not truly. Point is, you know, if you think about it, you, you're you can live. 
mentally in the past and in the future and not even be there. Can you ever think about that? You you physically can never be in the future and you can never be in the past. You can only be in what is called yeah. the eternal now, right? What the yeah. Buddhists call the eternal now. Mm-hmm. You can't live in the past. Mentally, you might be there. Yeah, you can do it that way, right? right? But if you think about it, that moment when you were thinking about the past was in the present. So same thing in the future. Yeah. You can never be in the future. No. You can think about it. And I don't get me wrong. I, I'm and not saying and you should think about I'm it. I'm not saying you don't know. plan, don't prepare. Right, don't, exactly, don't, exactly. Don't misconstrue right, 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 right. The point is... You can't be so consumed with the future and with the past. They are illusions. They are dream that it it, it, it stalls. It, what you it, do. I was gonna say it snubs what you where you are the, now. In the present, That's right. That's Life right. is meant to live in the here, in the now. So wherever you are, be here now. Right. Yeah. Be there totally. Make Always. the best decisions That's all, that That's you, all can. you can do. You know, in the end, three things matter most. How well did you live? How well did you love? And how well did you learn to let go? Yeah. You know, and I think letting go is something that. You know, we could spend a that, whole that, other podcast. I was gonna say that's a hard one there. Yeah, but yeah. that's something that uh, you know. That's a part of that's a part of living in the now is letting go of the past and letting go of of the anxiety in the future and and, and letting go of multiple things. Yeah. All right. Last question before we get out of here. This hour has flown by. Um, what is your number one piece of wisdom in terms of? If we were to freeze this tape, this tape, right, this recording in the future. <laughs> He's and, living in the past, and, right? In 3,000 years, it gets unthawed, and, you know, the ink, the reptoids or aliens or whatever, Oh, okay, the they, time they capsule unthaw, thing. They, and they're, they're like, this is your one piece of advice. Like, this is what future, a future civilization to start their civilization on would be this piece of wisdom. Or if you could go back to your 20-year-old self. Hopefully these are the same thing. Go back to your twenty year old self and Oh, what would and, I tell and me? And what would you tell him? What's the number one piece of advice you would give? Wow. Uh, I I guess it would be you know, pretty much everything we've discussed. Keep an open mind. One um, thing, give me one piece of wisdom. Oh, wow. One, one piece. piece of wisdom. I, I know not, it's tough. I'm not good at these wisdom sayings things. It doesn't have to be a quote. Uh, just okay. what would you tell? What would you tell your your old self, if your your young self? Live. Let me say, live your life as though you don't know what's coming, and just do the best you can with what you have. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I'd have to think about that actually, to to be able to convey it and to say it in a come, back, come in, back on a future episode. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, I to, got it. Now. To, I got it now. You know, to bottle yeah. it up in a yeah. in a package. It's a loaded uh, question. Yeah. Um. You know, I thought you were gonna say something like, you would go back to your uh, young self and say, "Hey, remember Tracy Jones or whatever." Don't you know? I'm, I'm <laughs> How did you know that? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. But um, no. So so say that again. Oh, I don't even know if I can say it again. <laughs> Live. What, what so you have to play it again? I don't, I don't know. know. Um, live your life as though you're not expecting anything. Just do the best you can with what you got. and move with what you got and move forward. Um, I think you know, that's n- no no presumptions. Yeah. No no I, I th- um, anticipations. Even you know you can you can plan like we were saying. So I think that's a perfect thing to kind of end on is expectations. Mm-hmm. And as I've gotten older. Go ahead. I was gonna say, and you have to have them. Yeah, you, you, you've got to, you've got to have somewhere well, yeah, where, it, where you're trying to get to. Yeah, I mean, if but you, if it doesn't work out, that's okay too. Exactly. So, like obviously, because you know, things change, the path right. changes. Obviously, if you go to turn your faucet on, you expect it to turn on. There's an expectation there. Yeah, you know, the of water, water, water to come, water out. To right, come right. out. But the point is, what you just said there is is so interesting that don't get so caught up in the model of how things you think they should be. Should be, yeah. Right? Right. So when something doesn't go your way, that should be just as okay because there is insight. It's not the end of the world. There is insight into that thing that didn't go your way just as much, and you will learn. And life right. is a process of learning. There's a, axi- you know, a, a maxim that I go by from a, for my business, and that is enjoy the process. Meaning you're going to yes. fall, you're yeah. going to fail. You're going to get hurt. Enjoy that process of learning and not even the end result, not even the end product. 
but what got you to the that? voyage yeah. that the, yes the voyage the journey and the yeah. journey of life yep. you know getting the thing is one thing but not getting your thing is just as interesting it, it's yeah it's just as interesting. it's just as okay and you can learn just and a lot of times it's it's for your benefit because if everything went, if every if you molded reality to what you thought it would be like, you wouldn't be where you are now. I, I would not. Everything be. is kind of unfolding perfectly. Yeah. How it's supposed to be for you. That you know. So that I, that's great. You know, doing without expectation. Yeah. Giving, yeah. giving without expectation of anything in return. And, yes. And yes. And and doing and and yeah. that's with life. You know, life is, is to me is kind of a game, and it's. Something you should play, have fun with it. Yeah, it's serious, but you know, don't ex- don't have any expectation. And when it doesn't go your way, learn from it. Learn from it. Grow from it. Yeah. And, and, and get that, hurt from it. And that you know, and I mean, all it happens that, too. All of that will lead towards wisdom. That's right. Wow. <laughs> well, Jim, it's been fun. It has. Like th- th- got- this is really interesting because, honestly, yeah. you know, he, he he's like. Hey, come over. We're going to do this. And I'm like, okay, do I need? No, just come. All right. More so, let's talk over some wine. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so this has been really fun. Well, I appreciate you being here. Appreciate you coming, you know, and and, and uh, talk. Well, and, and I knew you'd, you'd, you'd be a, a first pleasure. great guest to have. <laughs> a great first guest here on the first pilot episode of Wine and Wisdom. I appreciate you, man. And I, I learned. I got feel like I got wiser. Hopefully you guys got wiser. I know I did. To the show. And again... Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you leave us a like, drop a comment, any question, topics that uh, you want us to talk about. And uh, keep following along, guys. Um, appreciate the love. And Jim, thanks for coming on. And, and your handle popped up on the screen, but where can they find you if they want to oh, connect with you? Um, YouTube, I'm Triple Darth. Triple Darth. And, and I just do motorcycle stuff, so it's yeah. it's not like exciting to you know. Yeah. everybody. Yeah. Just, just my motorcycle buddies. So there you go. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll leave it at that. Yes. Thanks again, guys, for for listening, for yes. watching, for tuning in to Wine and Wisdom. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you guys next time on the show. Awesome. Peace and namaste. Namaste.